New litigation from the New York Attorney General is calling for the disbandment of the National Rifle Association, accusing that organization of illegally mismanaging millions of dollars. Attorney General Letitia James says four top executives, including CEO Wayne LaPierre, redirected tens of millions of dollars meant for the gun rights advocacy group toward their personal use instead. The attorney general in Washington, D.C. is also suing the NRA over alleged misuse of charitable funds. Now, in a statement, the NRA called the litigation, quote, baseless and an attempt to score political points. It goes on to say its 5 million members, quote, won't be intimidated or bullied. The group has filed a countersuit um, against the New York lawsuit. So March for Our Lives, filed the complaint with the attorney general uh, in New York and supported yesterday's move. The organization, you may remember, is centered around gun reform and ending gun violence and was established by students impacted by the 2018 mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. And David Hogg is a survivor of that school shooting and one of the co-founders of the organization and joins us now. David, we haven't spoken to you in a long time. As I understand it, March our lives was doing a little trolling of the NRA uh, on Twitter yesterday, uh, sending out thoughts and prayers um, over the lawsuit. But um, in sort of all seriousness, I, first off, I'll get your take on this lawsuit. Um, yeah. What do you think? Is this a good move? Yeah, I, I think it's the right move. Um, this is exactly part mm -hmm. of what March for Our Lives was hoping for when we filed a complaint with, the, with Tish James, the New York Attorney General, about the NRA's uh, possible misspending and misuse of funds, because um, you know, obviously, we don't believe that they care that much about morals or children dying, the 40,000 people that die annually from gun violence in the United States. And we know that what, one thing they do care about, though, uh, is their money and where their donations go. And when we found out about Wayne, for example, um, taking private jets places and using uh, nonprofit uh, charitable dollars for that, it seemed a little messed up. Um, and I also just want to say a special thank you more than anything to Tish James, this law, this you know, move never would have happened if it wasn't for an elected official like Tish James for, you know, having the courage to take this move, especially against an organization so famous for bullying and intimidation um, of public officials and gun violence survivors. And, you know, when they say that it's a premeditated, you know, leftist agenda, I don't think this is premeditated. I think, you know, it's, it's a human agenda here that we're talking about. And it's about valuing our children and protecting them and not inanimate objects in the first place. And, um, on top of that, you know, I, I think it's just it's good that the NRA members are getting accountability because even if they don't necessarily agree with me, I would hope that the nonprofit uh, sector as a whole is held accountable, especially um, when their money is being completely misspent on things like private jets or $300,000, about $300,000 for Italian suits. Mm hmm. Um so it's been a couple of years since you and other fellow students helped to um, establish this organization. And man, in the beginning, the country couldn't get enough of you, right? You guys were on every cable outlet. Uh, there were interviews, massive marches. Uh, you know, um, lawmakers could not say no to you when you went to their office and asked for a sit down meeting. I am wondering what you have learned um, over the past couple of years about the grinding work of um, changing policy uh, especially policy that it's it seems when it comes to sort of gun gun rights, um, you know, it's very ingrained in um, in uh, American politics, but also American culture. What's this yeah. past two years been like for you? Um, it's been a really crazy past two years for everyone in the organization. Yeah. I think we spent a lot of that time figuring out how to build a stable foundation and really grow as much as possible, which we're doing with uh, about uh, 300 chapters across the country. Um, and you know, many people on that we brought on staff, uh, as many of our co-founders as well, have gone on to college because we obviously don't expect students to sacrifice um, their education to for to dedicate their you know uh, much of their lives to this organization. Um, I think one thing that we've learned is that it shouldn't take a mass movement of young people that don't want to die in their communities and schools on a daily basis to get this country to protect children and not guns in the first place. And we're not going to stop. And I'm. Sadly, I know that, you know, um, this issue is not going to stop until we actually make the change that we need. And even though we may not be in the headlines as much anymore, we're still out there because there's still people dying from gun violence. And 
I just want to say too that there's no coincidence that the communities, even right now with COVID, that are most impacted by COVID um, also happen to be the ones most impacted by gun violence. Because yes, gun violence is an issue that involves gun laws, but it's not only gun laws. It's an issue of militarism and poverty and racism and the history of white supremacy in the United States. And in that we see how discriminatory policies, even like redlining, are one of the top predictors of where gun violence occurs the most in the United States. So if we're not addressing those things in conjunction to um, with the gun laws that enable people to have guns in the first place, we're not talking about it. So I guess that's a big focus as well, not only talking about the NRA, but the resources of evil, like Dr. Dr. King talked about, too, that play into the injustice that prevails so much of this country. And of which gun Yeah, you know, it's... I think that um, all really great points. If anything, um, this one of the many things that this uh, virus has done, and we, I was just talking uh, earlier to somebody about that, is you know really put a spotlight on some of the inequalities that we already knew were there. But as you point out, that there's a lot of overlap, a lot of inter intersectionality, as they say, yes. um, when it comes to the things that have plagued us, but have now become sort of. Um, uh, risen to a crisis level because of this virus. Um, so you guys, for the first time, have been rolling out a brand new ad. It's aimed at young voters. I want to play some of it. So when we leave our homes this time, will the people carrying weapons of war and banners of hatred decide our future again? Or will we stand up and demonstrate our power? Our power means we demand all gun sales will be licensed. Our power means we demand weapons of war be banned for good. Our power means lawmakers must listen. Our power means we refuse to watch black people be murdered in the streets. Our power means we refuse to fear for our lives. Okay, so what does March for Our Lives want young voters to know? And how do you plan on turning out the vote? What have you guys been doing? So, you know, we've been registering voters across the country, even before the pandemic and everything. Um, of course, we've had to transition a lot of our work into online, such as our phone bank that we're doing tonight to get, you know, people out to vote with our chapters from across the country. Um, to help get young people out to vote, too, we're hoping that we're, we're working to make people understand, the, as you said, the intersectionality of this issue. And as we know, even more recently in polling, um, for obvious reasons, you know, um, racial justice has become a top voting issue, especially for young people, making people realize that gun violence prevention is a racial justice issue and that the communities that tend to be mm. the most impacted are the ones that are most affected historically by racial and economic and environmental injustice. Um, and that's only one part of it. So along with that, working with community organizers across the country and, you know, trying to ask how we can be supportive too, because obviously it's not our place as an organization that was founded in Parkland to go to other communities and say, hey, this is what we're going to do for you. Instead, what we try to ask is, hey, what can we do to support the work that we see that you're doing? We want to give you that credit because we realize that the gun violence prevention movement um, started way before March for Our Lives, and it's not going to be ended by, it's not going to, you know, uh, be fully accomplished by any one organization. It's going to be accomplished by all organizations such as Good, Ki Good Kids Mad City in Chicago or the Brave Youth Leaders of St. Sabina um, on, in Chicago as well, or you know any of these other amazing organizations such as Brady or Giffords that are more national that are out there that are doing these work and helping file these uh, you know letters with attorney generals and asking how can we collaborate and build a coalition of uh, Americans from across the country to work together, even though we may not understand each other's communities, to address the violence that plagues us all. Um, so before I let you go, uh, are there any particular national or local races that you're really focusing on? Yeah, so we're focusing mainly on states where young people can have the biggest impact because we realize that until young people start scaring those the people in power with their vote and making their voice heard, along with protesting as well, and um, basically making those in power uncomfortable like we did again in 2018, we're going to keep dying in our schools and in our communities on a daily basis because the current uh, quote unquote adults that are in power are not protecting us because they believe that they are willing to let a certain number of people die in order to avoid the political cost of passing common sense uh, gun laws and also gun violence prevention measures such as violence intervention programs. So that's why we're encouraging everybody to go out and vote and join us as well at MarchForOurLives.com. All right. Well, David Hogg, it's really nice talking to you again. Haven't seen you in a while. I like the facial hair. Um, thank, you. thank you so much. 
Yes, absolutely. Have a great day. <laughs>